Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And Madam Webb's failure is complete. Apparently, it failed so bad that there's not going to be a Madam Web franchise. It seems like Sony is rethinking all of their Spider-Man spinoff movies. It's a complete disaster. Is anyone surprised? No. I don't think anyone's surprised by this. So let's uh, let's dive into this because I'm sure you're you're just dying to hear about what a huge failure Madam Web was. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. You'll get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! We're back together. We're back together again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I left her alone for a day and you can go out to Twitter and see and she decapitated her My Little Ponies and put them in a pickle jar. They're not a pickle jar. They're in a sealed container and it's got cleaner in it. It's fine. Okay. They're all fine. They're all fine. Hey, I want to give you guys a reminder. We're going to be doing more podcasts so you can actually get the audio version of Clownfish TV out on Spotify and Amazon and iTunes. So you can take us with you. You can take us with you wherever you go. And uh, I'm so so sorry. <laughs> and we're uh, we're bringing Drez back. We have a lot of things, a lot of things going on here. But uh, I don't think there's a lot of things going on at Sony in regards to the no. uh, the Spider Verse. Well, there were a lot of refunds apparently. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I think once people saw the reviews, they're like, nope. Yeah, I don't know why nope. you would buy a ticket. I mean, I saw this from the this from the trailer. I was like, no, mm -mm. Uh, no, uh -uh. Nope. no, not for me. So this is, uh, well, it's supposed to be for you. We're going to talk about that because it sounds like uh, mostly like men went to this yes, movie. Yes, it was men. I talked about that yesterday. It was more men <laughs> than women. But they want, they want this female audience. And we're going to, we're going to talk about this in another video coming up today too, that like, this is everything that, that has kind of gone awry with superhero comic books too. Women do read comics. Some women do read superhero comics, but historically superhero, that genre that's been more of a male thing. So them trying to pivot hard into like getting, getting a female audience with like these CW type movies. It just, it, it doesn't work. Like women want webtoons. They want manga. Women go to see the Mar or go to see the Marvel films because they want to see, you know, America's ass, not because they want to be America's ass. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Your misogyny is showing. All right, so this comes from The Hollywood Reporter. Inside Sony's Madam Web collapse, forget about a new franchise. The flop is wiping out an entire plan for a new movie series as Sony becomes the latest superhero studio in need of a pivot. Is that what we're calling it, a pivot? Um, but here's the thing. They're doing Craven too, and, and that one's more directed to the, to dudes, and I don't think it's going to do well. Either. It's not going to do well. You can't do – this is what I'm, I'm talking about. Like why – who thought, other than Venom, I'll give you Venom because Venom had his own spinoff comic series and stuff. But other than Venom, you can't separate Spider-Man's villains from Spider-Man. really well known. Doc Ock, maybe, but yeah. like, but they're dancing around Peter Parker in this movie too. And it's like, this just doesn't, it doesn't work. Nobody gives a shit. The reason people give a shit about the Spider-Man villains is they like Peter Parker. They like Spider-Man. Right. And they're just like, who, who are these people? Who are these random people? You know, a bunch of women dressing up and they're not even, they're not even in costume for the movie. I guess it's like a dream sequence or something, but they said, yeah, it's got, um, the lowest average rotten tomatoes score of any major superhero film in nearly a decade, 13%, 13%. We're, we're 2% away from Batman and Robin here mm -hmm. guys. And Batman and Robin, I can actually watch because it's just kind of cringy, funny, haha. -ha. It's like a parody of superhero movies, but this one's playing it serious, and that's a problem. Um, but they said, yeah, on Wednesday night, you could actually watch advanced ticket sales declining in real time as buyers were refunding their tickets. Marvel's is a major theatrical chain insider. Uh, it really uh, says something when you'd rather have Shazam 2 numbers. So somebody who was in the theatrical chain had access to the to the computers and yes. stuff said they watched. watched. People asked for refunds in real time. This is like... The, on the opening night. Oh my God. This is like a like a sitcom or something. Like we can see people asking for refunds. <laughs> it's like this like comically large number on the screen that this is not an actual computer program, but just so the audience can tell that they're losing sales. It marked one of the lowest starts in Hollywood history for a film based on a Marvel character. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna get much further than it's that it already started at. I just don't. Uh, domestic box office for the first six days in North America was just twenty six million after opening midweek on Valentine's Day. These are not saying they're not saying at opening week. 
Yeah, like, well, you know, weekend opening week, six day weekend. Well, guys, we still have time. We still have the the Valentine Easter weekend. <laughs> I know. Um, so there's still, Easter, yeah. still a couple of weeks in there. You can make some money. International tallied at 25 million from 61 markets, even for the fan friendly cinema score grade, uh, or even the fan friendly cinema score grade was poor. C plus, low for a superhero title. Wow. I think they're being kind. Anyway, from everything I've heard. Uh, like DC and the once unstoppable Marvel, Sony's now finding itself under the gun to reevaluate how it makes comic book movies. This is what I was talking about yesterday, actually. Um, they said, I love this. They said previous Spider-Man universe movie, Morbius, was a critical bust and much aligned, maligned by fanboy online. It was, it was, it was a thing. It was a thing. Um, but they're basically saying they were trying, if you go down the article, they're trying to um, find what women wanted. You know, go up a little bit. It says right here, it said, um, we're not going to see another Madam Web movie for another decade plus. This is kind of unrelated, but yes, it failed. Sony tried to make a movie that was a different type of superhero movie, meaning that they were trying to look at it in a different way by not having superheroes. Madam Web joined a troubling trend for the superhero genre. Every live action comic book movie last year underperformed except from Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which we've mentioned many times. And they said the Marvel Studio superhero fatigue, um, which I, I mentioned, two people are tired of it. And superhero. Plus, if you just, you just shut something out and slap a superhero on, it doesn't mean people are going to watch it. Marvel and DC and Sony are all attempting to to work of birthing new franchises. Difficult work of birthing new. Birthing, what? New birthing new fran. Okay, it's here. More like you thought you 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 mistaken your your you know intestinal distress cramps for birthing. Nobody wants to watch though. the placenta. It's not the placenta. It it's is crap. It's, like you think okay. you're in labor, but it's actually poop. <laughs> that's that's what we're dealing with here. They are taking the F list characters and trying to make movies out of them because they've run out of A and B and C list characters to make movies out of. Nobody cares. They like everybody knows Spider Man. They know Batman. They know Superman. They know the X Men. You know what I'm saying? Like that's fine. You can do movies, but you can't do movies based on. Well, this is Spider-Man's uh, second cousin twice removed. It's uh, Spider-Manuel. Uh, <laughs> he's, um, he's diverse. He's diverse, um, right? Like nobody gives a shit. They don't care. So they're talking about that Sony tried to do something new. Uh, but there are, when there are capes and cowls on every Metropolis corner, doesn't it make sense to avoid the usual tropes? No, that's, for, that's a superhero movie. You know what makes sense? Don't make them at all. And try for a more grounded feeling suspense thriller with low key charm. No, cause a suspense thriller, not a superhero movie. And then, then here's what I was talking about. And moreover, make a superhero movie for women and young girls, except it didn't work because yes, exactly. Um, I talked about this yesterday. The, the audience of female viewers that went to Madam Web was, first of all, people didn't go in general, but it was right. 46% female to 53% male. Same with the Marvels. It was predominantly male because it's a predominantly male audience for superhero films. Even if you make it a paramedic and boring as fuck, women are smart enough not to go. That's just it. They keep trying to force. Look, uh, I'm going to be honest. They keep trying to force women, whether it's in comics or uh, movies, trying to say that women want the same kind of action movies that the men want. And yeah, Marvel. No, I like action movies. I do. But uh, I want the ones that are good. Right. But what I'm saying is a lot of times, and not always, you're you're the exception. That's why we're married, because you knew what Street Hawk was. Yes, I did. I love Street Hawk. But usually... Just usually it's like, you know, uh, dorky boyfriends dragging their girlfriends or wives to some action movie or some superhero it was movie or usually something. Usually the other way around with it was, was us. I was the one that was more excited about superhero movies and was dragging him. I don't get excited about much anymore because it's just like there's nothing to get excited about. But you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's the same, the same thing has happened with Star Wars and the same thing has happened. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, it's just a male franchise. But look, I'm telling you, the, the majority of the audience, I'm not saying that there aren't any women that uh, don't, you know, like superhero comic books so that nobody, you know, no women like. Super I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, look, when we started going to conventions like 20 years ago, you were one of the few women at the convention. Yes. <laughs> like there were not a, a lot of women. Experience. There. And then we kind of saw the rise of the cosplayer and we saw that, you know, manga and anime, which has always been. I would say that the audience for manga and anime has always been a lot more evenly um, split. But cape comics, superhero comics, that sort of thing, not a lot of women are into that sort of thing. I think more
more so now they are because of the MCU and stuff like that. But even back then, it was not the, the norm. Well, so I think what has happened, I think they were like, okay, oh, women are watching this too because they like, you know, Tom Hiddleston's ass or whatever's going on, or they like that the characters are funny. Okay, so instead of just giving people more of the same that work, like, okay, this we're keeping the characters themselves. And we know what our audience actually is. If women come along for the ride, that's fantastic. They're like, oh no, let's do something like She-Hulk. Let's do something like the Marvels. Let's it's, do something it's like- It's basically like they do with Doctor Who. You want to be the doctor, right? Not ride along with the no. doctor. And women like, no. No. We want to do- ride with the doctor. <laughs> when Doctor Who was the most successful, and I know a lot of a lot of uh, old heads, a lot of OG Whovians are, are going get, to get angry. And that's, that's fine. But I'm just looking at the numbers here. When it was the most successful, it was the younger, attractive male doctor with a female companion and a lot of women wanted to travel with David Tennant or Matt Smith. That being said, there are a lot of female superheroes and you know, unfortunately they've waited till more recently to actually do their movies. Um, but some of them have been good, like the original wonder woman and some have been not so good. And the same for TV shows. Like, I'm sorry. A lot of people are pissed about She-Hulk. It was okay. It really wasn't that great. I mean, I don't think it's as bad as everybody was saying. I don't think it's that level, but I don't think it was good either. I mean, they could have if they leaned into the source material more. But again, then we have a bunch of people that are getting hired to try to basically turn Marvel and Star Wars into female-friendly rom-coms. That's what they're trying to do. Because they misunderstand, (laughs) fundamentally misunderstand. They think that if they just make it a woman and then, you know, lean into, like, they think women think we'll relate to, that it's going to make it something they're going to want to see. But they don't. They're going to want to, if they're going to want to see that kind of stuff, they'll go see a movie that is that kind of stuff. Right. They won't go see a superhero show or movie trying to pretend to be that kind of stuff. Or they're going to go see a superhero movie that's what they like. Yeah, if everything's a chick flick, right? Like you don't you don't make superhero movies or science fiction movies chick flicks. If women are into actual superhero movies, actual science fiction movies, then they like the characters and the premise and everything the way that it is. You don't have to turn it into a cringy CW show to get women involved. But they're like, oh, we've got some women coming. Let's get more women. So let's just turn it into you know, Dawson's yeah, Creek or some shit like and then, that. You and know? then it's not what it was. So the Allie ones that McDeal. did like it, the women who did like it aren't going to like it now. The men don't like it. And then most of the women are, are, aren't going to see it. The ones that you're trying to pander to, they're going to go watch the actual rom-coms. They're not going to go see this. Like they don't, they didn't like superhero movies to begin with. So they're not going right. to go. I mean, so it's really stupid. <laughs> they can get better rom-coms out of K-drama, out of anime, out of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, K-drama. If, so if they're not into that stuff, but this is what Marvel's been trying to do. They've been trying to turn, and they've said this, Disney's actually said this. They want to turn it into a lifestyle brand. They literally have, you know, 30, 40 something year old women on the Marvel YouTube channel showing off like, you know, female friendly products. And that's fine. That's the strategy that works with the Disney brand. But it doesn't necessarily work for Marvel or Star Wars, but they're trying to make it cool for women. And they're actually chasing the men who historically were the the largest audience off in the process. But you're not allowed to say that. Every time that people bring that up, like Star Wars and stuff like that, it was predominantly male audience, which is just actual numbers based. It's just numbers. It's It's not not sexism or misogyny. It's It's numbers. It's just numbers. Objectively looking at numbers based, it is true. I'm sorry if you don't want to hear it. It's true. Just because you don't want it to be true doesn't make it a lie. And the thing is, they keep trying to run with this narrative that's not true. And it's like, it, but it is true. I'm sorry. And I'm a woman telling you that it's true. Yeah, they said right here. There it is. There it is in black and white on the blog. They said they had a, a studio, veteran studio source said males make up 65 to 70 percent of the superhero audience in North America. Uh, in the case of Madam Web, the percentage of female viewers was still only 46 percent. This happened with the Marvels, too. It yep. turned out that more Actually, more white dudes went to go see the Marvels than women. So they tried to change it to make it more female friendly. And it, they still wound up with men, but fewer men. You know well, what I'm saying? It was like, what are you doing? Well, no one went to see it anyway. Nobody went to but see it. But they're talking about how they're trying to transition superhero movies. I would say you give it a rest because everybody's over it. Okay. Yeah. And they're saying, I don't know how big the, tradi- the transition is going to be or what it looks like, but it's probably going to be fewer movies, I hope. Bigger brands. I hope that you stick to the, what the characters are and who they are and not try to pander, but here we are. Uh, they said Sony's willing to take some risks, but it wants home runs. Well, they're not going to do this again after how bad no. Matt Webb did. But they said if Craven's a gigantic hit, the narrative could be different. No. I don't think it's going to be a gigantic no. hit. I'm no. sorry. I, Nobody I, cares about... I mean, Craven works with Spider-Man. Again, you know, Morbius works uh, kind of with Spider-Man. He's not one of my... Morbius is not one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. I think it's, you know... But I'm saying, like, you can't you can't take these 
and these are, well, Craven's a bigger villain, but like they're, they're D-list characters on their own. You can't take them away from Spider-Man. Like, you know, worked with the Joker. That was like a one-off, you know, because yeah, the Joker's- the Joker's much more well-known. Yes. Again, you could probably do this with the Goblin, Green Goblin or Hobbit, or you could have Goblin and Son. You could have Green Goblin and Goblin Hobgoblin and or something. Oh I don't God, know. I still wouldn't watch it. I still, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you could do something like that. You could do something with, Doc Ock. I think Doc Ock actually would be an interesting character to do a standalone. But when you detach these other characters from Spider-Man, they don't freaking work. And Madam Web, I'm sorry. She's a dumbass character anyway. I always hated her. I thought it was stupid that we had all these spider people running around with spider powers. And she was a mutant in the comics. And she was just some old lady in a chair. I'm like, snooze but it's still more interesting well, than the movie apparently another takeaway that's interesting and they do bring it up in this article i pulled up another one but this one talks about it was that they kept saying they thought the budget was around 80 million yeah mm -mm. they think it's in the low 100 million oh i can believe that i mean these movies aren't cheap to make anymore i that, mean even the cheap sources. ones aren't cheap to make no so i'm like it's it's not it would have to make a couple hundred million to break even because they were advertising the hell out of this one. Yes, so I would think they more were. than that because I mean I think it's probably closer like to three hundred million or so on this one, um, and they're, I don't think they're going to do it. They couldn't even opening weekend. Well, they did fifty, I guess, between the two fifty ish, sixty somewhere in that range between the two international and domestic markets, but. Uh, people are canceling their tickets. Word of mouth out. People aren't yeah. going to bother unless they want to go because they either like pain or they want to go and like just laugh at the, uh, how bad it is. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't laugh at how bad it is in the theater. I would. I would uh, find find another way to watch it. Um, I wouldn't pay to go see it in the theater unless it was like you know bargain matinee or something. But but yeah, it's just. I mean, it's so bad that they fired the entire writing room on Silk because uh, they're yeah, like we so want a male yeah, audience, rumor. right? So, because they know that's what the audience is. And again, like, women go to these movies because there because there are a lot of women who like these movies. Yes. And they'll go to it if they're good. And if they're if it's not that good, but you give them something that interests them, like somebody's cute ass, they're gonna go for that reason. I mean, let's be honest. Well, that's the thing. Like, look, look, and I'm not, I'm not. I want to be very clear. I have to be very clear. I'm not trying to be misogynistic. I'm not trying no, to. No, because if he would, he would, have, he would have a foot up his rear. I'm saying that what was most of the normie woman chit chat around Marvel? It was, oh, who's cuter, Tom Hiddleston or Tom Holland? You know, well, oh, let's. Like, I think it was more like, you know, Chris Evans, like that. Yeah, but Tom Holland was like a kid. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. But still, you know what I'm saying? Like, and people are like, oh, Andrew Garfield's back. Uh, we thought he was cute. You right. know, and that's the discussion. Again, I'm not saying everybody. I want to be very clear. I'm just saying I remember going to the comic book shop and women were few and far between. A lot of them are smarter to, to go find something else to do than to get into the nerd shit. I mean, hey. I'm not. But no, I'm just. Watch your mouth. Okay, I'm watching my mouth. Anyway. What I'm are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You can cut my head off and put it in a vat of cleaning. <laughs> That's right. No, I mean, Geeky is uh, the exception. She I think actually. There's more, there's more women than, there, than just me. I think but. it's different stuff. I think, I think women are geeks of um, a lot of other stuff besides superhero comics. Superhero comics were well, designed comics to be male the, power fancies. But the Let's com be honest, they comics, were. I'm not talking about. Some, I mean, there were women with comics, but I'm talking about the films and the shows. Yeah, the films and the shows are more accessible to a lot of women. Yes, they are. Um, they feel more comfortable watching those uh, you know at home or other places than it is like going to a comic shop which they feel like because of uh, being truthful or because the narratives out there they're probably worried about going to but at the end of the day the numbers are there men predominantly go see his movies and there's nothing wrong with that just like no. women predominantly watch other types of movies that's just the facts manga does that mean, has a massive female readership but does that you mean know? that no women watch this film these films no, no it doesn't mean that but you're you're a much lower number. And if they want to go for a wider You're not a reach, 10. You're like a four. <laughs> if they want to go for a wider, <laughs> wider reach and they want to get the men in there and get some a lot of the women who like that stuff in there, they're going to have to rethink about what they're doing. One, I think the superhero movies in general need to take a, a back seat for a while. Because the number one movies last year were ones like Barbie and Oppenheimer, which completely are opposite each other. And yeah. like Super Mario Brothers and yeah. things like that. They were completely removed from the superhero narrative and we need to get out of that and move on to other things people are over it and I, that's the bigger thing here whether think, you're male or female or other kids yeah it's 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 basically a market saturation this is kind of why manga i mean talking about manga 
why it died in the late 2000s. People, I don't know if a lot of people remember this. I mean, for all talk of how amazing manga is doing right now, it kind of died off in the late 2000s because there was an oversaturation of really mm -hmm. shitty series and a lot of American attempts at manga and everybody was manga out. In fact, well, you they're can, doing it again. Yeah. They're pulling out these ones that they think are problematic and no one cared about and then they're getting mad because localizers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But, but, you know, they are being kind of ridiculous. But I'm just saying, I mean, they're, they're, they're digging the bottom of the barrel with a fine series now. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, when, you, when you've got to do Madam Frickin' Web, when that's because the thing is, Sony only has the rights to Spider Man characters. So right. you get, you get Spider Man and you get uh, his villain, his rogues gallery. But if you can't make a Spider Man movie, because, you know, the main Spider Man character is tied up with the MCU right now, then you basically get the leftovers. And, like, it, for them, I think it was kind of a bad deal. You know, uh, the Spider Verse movies were good. They, they did very well, but they had Spider Man, lots mm -hmm. of Spider Men's mans in them so that that's a totally different thing but yeah nobody wants a movie about madam web especially not a shitty movie about madam web i don't think you can make a good movie about madam web and even if you did i don't know if people would go see it because who the fuck is madam web people are like i don't even know who madam web is isn't that the chick from 50 shades oh but it's not it's not that kind of movie oh well, i'm not interested <laughs> does she have superpowers well kind clothed? of she, yeah, I mean, if they put her in just... look up Madam Web and see an old lady in a wheelchair and they're like, no. Nope. <laughs> I am not... Not my kink, not my kink. Not my kink. I'll be wrapping this up. I, we're definitely wrapping this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Again, uh, go out to wherever you find podcasts and, and uh, subscribe to the Clownfish TV podcast out there. We'll talk later. Bye.